Nick, you want to lead us in the, in the pledge, please? Yep. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing for a moment, please. In lieu of a prayer tonight, uh, tonight's meeting will be dedicated to and in the memory of Kathy's mom, in memory of longtime employee Jim Reed, and in memory of Jim Ensley, longtime Jersey Township trustee. And also, let's keep in uh, our thoughts and prayers the, the children and teachers who passed away in, <clears throat> in Santa Fe, Texas this past week. And let's also make sure that we take time this coming weekend to remember the true meaning of Memorial Day. <coughs> Thank you. Will you be seated? Roll call, please, Kathy. Carter. Walter. <coughs> Powell. Arsta. Here. Hayes. Here. Hicken. Here. Lee. Here. Okay, we have a quorum present tonight. Uh, first thing on the agenda is citizens' comments. And I just want to make sure, was, was there any um, park and rec interviews tonight? Is there any, did anybody apply for? No. We did not receive did any not applications receive. for that, so we'll re-advertise it tomorrow. One, we did receive one application. I think maybe Jessica didn't get it before. I wasn't here for packets. So. so there is somebody here tonight to interview? I don't know whether they're here, but they did submit an application. I'll get the application and have one attended to for it. Very good. <clears throat> okay, citizens' comments. Anybody wish to speak tonight? Uh, you'll have five minutes. I will need your name and address. Yes, ma'am. Mary McCann. It's 5303 Clooney Road. Is that the Okay. I have a couple issues. <clears throat> One young went in and put the cemetery at Swisher Cemetery and put a new fence in. They took out my little rose bush that I put in my son's grave for 31 years of sleep. And it always blooms at least twice a year. And they took it out. And I'd like to know why. I think it needs to be replaced. No, it was, I chose something that was only got so high and would not, you know, take a little place. You know, like some things just it's grown and grown everywhere. This didn't. And they eliminated it. Okay, well, we'll certainly look into that because unless it was around the fence line. It was right beside, near, you know, the cemetery, or the stones, and I had it right back this way here. Because the only thing the Eagle Scout worked on was the fence line, so you didn't work on anything on the interior of the cemetery. It's right beside my stone. My stone sits pretty close, oh, about that far away from the, from the line, you know, the fence line. Okay. And well, if something, was, something was taken out, we'll, repl we'll make sure we replace it. Okay, and the other thing is, the past several years, it's been rough trying to go in there because there hasn't been any gravel on that road back to the cemetery for years. And I keep feeling like I'm going to go over into the, when it starts to slip them, my vehicle. If I end up in that daggone field that next to it, when you know you're coming out, it would be on the east side. Uh, someone's going to have to pay for me getting my car fixed or pulled out of there because it needs to be gravel on that thing. In respect for anybody that's going back there because there's been several people who've been buried back there since my son was, back okay. in 86. And your address again, ma'am? 5303 Columbia Road. All right. Alan and BJ, you guys got that? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Okay, and the other issue that I have, I've lived there, I didn't know that thing laid in water where I'm at, and I think that field, the great big field there, it, like a river that goes by there, comes in my yard. My neighbor who claims she's... Anyways, she says that the water that's on hers is from me. Her property's a little higher than me, but there's a park on her side of the driveway uh, next towards me. It floods, and it all floods back here. And I know she's been complaining to the city here about it, and I don't mind that part, but when they're making a mess for me, uh, well, I'm not stupid. Water goes downhill, it don't plug up here and keep the water, you're watching the water run this way uh, uh, through the tile, and it's supposed to be not running the further out. It goes almost down there to the Bernie Brush's place where that, you know, the road is there. I mean, you know the area. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I have a flood all the time in my yard. Sometimes it's all the way up next to that tree, real close to my house. I've had my kids over the years have to take their shoes off and go back this way to go around and put their shoes on just to go to school. Now that's how bad it's been all these years since in 66 I moved in there. So she's complaining about it, saying that the flood is making her yard good good down well, when trees grow so the risk you know kind of comes up anyways they put they made sure they said that, it, that the thing is that has clear here okay so it's standing about that high yeah, a little I was going to ask if they would cut that plastic off so it's you know next flush to the ground well whatever idiot Jones have working for the city and I'm just the way I look at it puts this orange thing down on top so now instead of this much water that has to build up before it goes in the drain, it's got that much higher before there's any holes for water to win. Where does that make sense? Okay, well, we're not going to get into any debates. But I know, we'll but have, I'd like to know. We'll where have, does that make sense? I want that thing down low. Matter of fact, I want that water out of there. I'm tired of driving through water over the years, which misses up the brakes, which misses up the cars. We'll, we'll so have I don't our, know really who to get with. Okay, I'll have... Uh, Mr. Haynes is our public service director. Okay. He has your address. Him up, huh? He has his address. He has your address yeah. and he'll come out and work with you, okay? Okay, because uh, it's nonsense of me to have to deal with water year after year. I can't even really plant flowers or shrubbery or anything out front just because my yard is so low. And I said, and I was told that I couldn't really fill mine up because I can't put water on the road and I can't be putting water on my neighbors. Uh, I've got water coming this way. And down there because it can't go across the road <laughs> and my neighbor says she gets to do it all all right we'll, we'll take a look at it for so you all right you're the guy i get to deal with good thank so you i had to have somebody and i'll be in touch with you about that rose bush and we'll yeah, get that and, replaced and get gravel on that thing because okay. i mean i slide and i don't want to tear my vehicles up because i'm sliding into that because there's no gravel on it for traction all right thank you thank you ma'am uh, I thought I'd be a bigger crybaby than I was. <laughs> you did, you when, did when fine. You had something for 31 years growing, and suddenly they take it out, and it was, you know, a little bit further back from where they had sprayed. I mean, I like the fence. Matter of fact, I like the house, what they did, because I like putting things around my place. And I like that one. <laughs> Thank you. Nick? Uh, yeah. We have an Eagle Scout here tonight that wants to talk to you about his project, and I'll f pass out some flyers on what he's working on while he's talking. Want to introduce yourself, give your uh, name and address. My name is Mick Walker, 937 Palestine Place North. So I, I was in here, sorry, uh, I was in here probably around this time last year, and I got approval for my project, and it's been, things have been coming around, and we finally started construction on it this past weekend. We uh, started laying the first course of stone. So uh, through some intermittent showers on Saturday, we, we started we we're, we're going to hope to finish the first course of stone, which the biggest struggle with that is just getting level, all the stones level. And once we get that first course down, we'll be able to start on, getting all the other courses. And I hope to have that, that first flower bed finished by um, this coming Monday, Memorial Day, as soon as I can. Um, like I said, I just wanted to update you on where the project is. Um, right now, we're like I said, we're working on the first bed. About to finish that, hopefully, and we're raising funds for the second bed. I don't have any exact numbers. I think it's we're 500 or so off from getting the second bed. That's that'd be the small to the three beds. That's the bed in the middle. And then I also like to thank you guys for your uh, um, cooperation, and contributions to the project. You guys helped me um, with the ties we took out. We you guys supplied us with the BJ helped us find a place to put the ties once we removed them. Ran into a few problems with the flowers. That's on my part, but we figured that out. So that's all. That's all squared away. Working with the ladies. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> I got the flowers figured out. That's all good. Very good. So, thank you. I just want to update you on our project. Thanks. Any questions for Mick? Looks good. All right. Yeah, it's going to look awesome, man. That's thank been needed you. for a long, long time. Thank you. Thanks, Mick. And anybody else wish to speak? Okay, we have a guest tonight. <laughs> Uh, yes, you. <laughs> well, I think it's him. Wanted you to see uh, Officer Morton and, and Demon in action. He's been in all kinds of newspapers and and uh, quite the celebrity right now. But 
How's he doing? Uh, good. We started on obedience and stuff, uh, socialization with him. Uh, two days ago, we started on the little bite pillow to do some bite words. Uh, if everything goes the way I have planned, I'm looking to have the narcotic certification in about three months. And then the patrol stuff will be shortly after that. Uh, we don't want to, uh, yeah, he's friendly. friendly. Oh, man, hey, <laughs> Working on those socialized um, skills. Socialization. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, I've been taking him every, you know, we've been to the Y, we've been to different places, to the park, and soccer games and stuff, letting him play with the kids. Um, so uh, if everything goes right in about, I'm going to say six, seven months, he should be fully certified to work the, the road here. Very good. Hopefully, like I said, three months, we'll be able to get out and do some narcotic work, get that certification done first while he's still developing his adult teeth and stuff. We don't want to um, do all the bite work and stuff that way until he gets his teeth. So, but he's, he's his grandpa's a uh, officer in Marion, city of Marion. Uh, his uncle is also a officer, um, canine officer, and if I understood the guy right, four out of the um, 11 puppies are going into police work. Wow. That's and great. mom and dad were both uh, in police work also. That's great. Very good. So it's a whole family affair. <clears throat> well, thanks for bringing him by. I wanted, no to, wanted to counsel to see him. And, uh, well, if you need a classroom <clears throat> to socialize him in, I've Come got four you. more days <laughs> with my fifth graders. Okay, that's not a bad idea. Thank you. Thanks, Officer Morton. Appreciate yeah, it. Morning. Yeah, he found his friend now. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. You guys have a good night. Be safe tonight. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Okay. Introduction, discussion, and approval of consent agenda matters. So moved. Moved by Mr. Hick or Mr. Barstow. Second. Seconded by Mr. Hick. <coughs> discussion. And roll. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? Yes. Well, that's right, we got a short list tonight. Uh, consent agenda passes. On the reports, uh, the only thing I really have is uh, just a reminder Memorial Day, uh, our celebration is uh, Monday, the 28th, and 10 o'clock at the cemetery, and 11 o'clock at Veterans Green. So um, I appreciate uh, Alan and Jason and BJ helping me out with as we set up and the bleachers and the electronic board signs and everything that we do for Memorial Day. So we can have our fly over again if we have the good weather and we'll be shooting the cannon. So welcome one and all. <coughs> Mr. Hicken. I have nothing there. Very good, sir. Mr. Zetz. Nothing there. Mr. King. Thank you, Mary. Just two items I already mentioned about the Parks and Recreation Board interviews. I'll get the application from Kathy, like I said, and contact that person and have them scheduled for June 4th. Come here and uh, second thing, and not to steal any of Jamie's thunders, but the Finance Department has moved, which is freed up office space. So we will be proceeding with interviews for our part-time HR manager um, here within the coming week. And that's all I have. Okay. They have hey. interview, sir. Good to touch on that in my report. Okay. It kind of <laughs> folded into HR manager having space now. <laughs> uh, any, so anything for BJ? No. And I'm sure uh, Kathy will post that, but if you folks know somebody, I know. I know. this is the city's appointment, so if you know somebody that might be interested in jumping on Parks and Recs, please spread the word. Mr. Nicholson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as BJ uh, mentioned, <laughs> Uh, we completed our move last week. Uh, we are fully down at, at Suite 2F at the far end of the hall. Uh, we had this space, uh, we had to run some cabling, we got it repainted, carpets cleaned. Uh, it turned out really nicely. Uh, stop up next time we're down there. Um, we, uh, we're right across the hall from the classroom, so we've had to kind of figure out how to work. The, we have one of those cipher door locks, but during the day we leave it unlocked so people can come in and see us. Uh, we try to leave the door open as much as we can, but sometimes the classrooms get a little kind of boisterous, so we, uh, we'll shut, but we have a sign that says, please walk in. Uh, it turned out really well. Uh, copiers should be here probably another week or two, so, um, but other than that, I think we're, we're, we're all good to go. Um, I am pleased to announce, since I did my report, uh, Janice Smith and Stephanie Tallman um, are our representatives to the Lincoln County, Lincoln County Safety Council. They go to the monthly meetings, they bring back the information on how to improve workers' comp claims or reduce the number of workers' comp claims. 
I'm pleased to announce that we were recognized with an achievement award. Uh, I don't know the exact amount, but the uh, achievement award recognizes that each company, they say company, but each, each organization that decreases its incident rate by at least 25% from the previous year. So that's a, a significant reduction in the number of claims and severity of claims, lost days, those types of things. Uh, kudos to all of the directors and the, and the staff. Uh, people have been really good about filling out what Janice calls the ouch reports. Anytime anybody has a, a slight injury of any kind so that we're aware of claims and we try to work through, try to minimize the number of workers comp issues that we have. Uh, so that's kudos to everybody involved that helped reduce that. That translates into dollars at the end of the day. The better our claims history is, the lower our rate is so it just saves everybody money in the long run. So I'm pleased to have that. Happy to answer any questions you might have on our my report or any of this. Anything with gaming. All right, very good. Thank you, sir. Nate. Yeah. Hey. Good evening, sports fans. Uh, right off the bat, resolution tonight for our um, well cleaning preventative maintenance work. That's on tonight. That's a uh, price that we got through the competitive bid process. Um, as of today, Creek Road water main project is underway. Um, it took some time with this crazy spring that we've had, but they were out in force today and we're going to start knocking that out. Um, I feel like there was something else I was going to say. Um, I went blank. Thank you. Um, if you think of it, we'll come oh, back to it. Yeah, no, um, if you remember, thank you. Uh, tw uh, 2016, did we start talking about the booster station upgrade? Okay. Um, so we were kind of in a holding pattern with that, uh, waiting for some potential developments to occur that have not occurred, at least in our service area. Uh, we met with some folks last week. We think we found the type of pump uh, that would be suitable for that application that would give us uh, some additional runtime without additional, well, without any more pressure than already uh, is put into that part of the system. Um, I'm anticipating that pump probably to be in the $30,000 price range, so hopefully, maybe in another couple weeks, I'll be showing up with another resolution so we can get moving on that. And, uh, the idea, the company that we're working with <coughs> is to change some of the controls in there. Um, right now we don't have the flexibility for two pumps to run if needed. That's a part of this project to have one, um, let's say full runtime pump and then a jockey pump situation if needed. We don't have that flexibility right now. We have to manually do that. Um, so other than that, I think that's all I have. If you have any questions, yes sir. So the, the the new pump is it, it that thirty thousand is significantly under the budgeted amount for the yeah for the well, project. Will you are you anticipating just taking a bite out of that and yep. leaving it? Mm -hmm. The right. the uh, the initial um, budget that I threw out there was possibly a total upgrade of the current station. I don't think that's necessary if we can get these pumps that we're looking at and, and we want to do one and, and let it run for a couple months and make sure it is going to be appropriate for our system and then make another purchase after after that. So um, the idea, um, uh, we're able to upgrade the pumps there for um, a price range and no more than half of our budget. I think we budgeted 460000 the idea then would be whatever we don't spend on the booster station, we use that money to uh, blast, uh, I'm sorry, power, not power wash, gee, my mind tonight, I'm sorry. Um, basically repaint the uh, smaller Beechwood Trails tower, uh, blast and, and recoat that. That's the tower as of today is offline. Uh, you got an email about that, that we sprung a leak, if you will. Uh, the crews are out tomorrow to weld and kind of fix that and hopefully have that back online maybe by the end of the week if all goes according to plan. So, anything else? All right, very good. Thanks, Nate. Alan? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple things. Uh, first is a resolution on tonight's agenda for uh, mosquito contract uh, for mosquito spraying with the uh, <coughs> county health department. Uh, just. As an FYI, last year we, we pulled the gear for 10,000. We only used 8,000 of that, uh, so we'll probably do about the same this year. 
Uh, we've worked with Lincoln County Health Department to get the first spray uh, for this year, uh, if the, uh, assuming the uh, resolution is approved, uh, for Wednesday or Thursday. They're calibrating some equipment, so they couldn't give me an exact date, but we'll put out public notice for that once we find out uh, that for certain. Uh, tornado sirens, uh, those have been being worked on. I've been trying for the last couple of days to get a status uh, from our contractor on that. I've not heard back from them, but uh, we'll certainly update once I know more on that. Uh, I think they've completed most of the work, but I just haven't got that, uh, that work back from them yet. Uh, and finally, uh, Mink, excuse me, Mink Street Phase 2 project. Uh, of course, we had the delays due to the weather and utilities not being out of the way. That is now scheduled for our contractor to start on June 4th. I just got the word, uh, the public service announcement basically from the uh, from ODOT uh, on Friday, and I uh, got that to Jess today, so she'll get that word out uh, either today or tomorrow, Facebook and Twitter and uh, our website. Uh, that's all I have specifically. Happy to answer any questions. Anything for Alan? Sure. Yes, sir. So, Alan, on the, the uh, report here, the um, Oak Meadow project, we still need the um, the easement, what's, what's going on with that? Uh, so latest on these, I've stopped and talked to those folks uh, a couple times now. Uh, they did not seem to have any anything against the project, but they have not reached back out to me. I went ahead and got the, uh, the legal, not the legal side of it, but the survey part of it drawn up. Uh, so I'm gonna drop that off to them hopefully this week uh, and then uh, see where they're at with that and then go ahead and proceed with getting the legal side of it done as well to get the paperwork drawn up so that I can drop that off to them, uh, assuming I don't hear anything back from them as well. Okay. Anything else for Alan? Thanks, sir. Scott. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> American Electric Power does an annual grant, and they've done so <laughs> since 2005, and it's the Local Economic Assistance Program Grant, or LEAP Grant. And these are specifically designed for economic development projects. So on behalf of the city, um, I applied for the grant um, to help offset the cost of our comprehensive plan. And we were awarded the 2018, or one of the 2018 LEAP grants in the amount of $10,000. So that can go towards offsetting the cost of our comprehensive plan. Also, due to the comments and questions related to Ordinance 2018-4314, I included a report in my report to address some of those comments. I also included aerial photos from the auditor's webpage. You can go from 2016 back to 1998, so I included a set of all those photos back to then. And then um, our zoning inspector, Steve Blake, went out to the trucking company property, took some pictures, and then the resident who came in with her concerns and went out to her property took some pictures, and those are also included in my report as well. <coughs> and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Anything for Scott? Okay. Thank you, Scott. Lanier? Thank you, Mayor. you got to be happy to know that the guys who vandalized Foundation Park in the wintertime, they will be starting community service with me in June. Um, the Lincoln County, they reached out to me two weeks ago and asked when I'd be able to start that and I told them it'd be best till after school. So I'll be working with them through the parks all summer long. They need three <coughs> hours. So I had a parent ask me about only having it on one Saturday. I don't anticipate it to be that way. Um, well, two Saturdays, possibly three, but really Saturday is really the only day that I can do it because those guys are underage and they don't drive. <coughs> so I'll be working with them probably four to eight hours multiple times throughout the summertime. Um, still working on considering consideration for the Freedom Park movie night. Um, I went to the chamber meeting last week, passed out a few flyers, had one bite, so hoping we um, get a little bit of interest for the sponsor for that event. Um, other than that, I'm happy to ask, answer any questions. Do you have a copy of that flyer? Yes, the email, I can send it to you. Thank you. So I'll hit some of the other businesses. Chamber is a great place, but <coughs> if they don't particularly come to that chamber meeting, then they didn't see it. So we'll get it out to all of them. I also put it on the chamber website. Oh, it was okay, approved by good. Diane through the website as well, so it is out there somewhere. Very good. Anything for Lanier? Yes, sir. 
I have some questions, uh, Lanier. So I have number five. It says CS Electric sent quote for Freedom Park electrical work. What, yes. What, 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 how much was that? Let me grab it. Sure. That was under what we recorded when we put APO for. There were two different quotes. First quote was for three, well, four thousand one hundred thirty-one bucks. The second quote was for five thousand three hundred forty-seven dollars, and the five thousand dollar quote would mimic or give it the same display as what we have at Municipal Park, and we provide two different circuits, three receptacles, two light, two light packs on both ends, and provide power to the shelter and sub panels. So that's the anticipation for future. And I also got a quote for um, shelter replacement at Municipal Park as well. And that was for the 3200 bucks. And we have five encumbered ready to go okay. for that project. So we think it's going to be $5,000? It'll be less. Less than five. Yes. Okay. Uh, item 6B. The National Fitness Campaign. National Fitness Campaign. Um, a few weeks ago, the email was sent to Dave. It automatically came to me. They also called me. Um, they, they go out to many cities. They scope and figure out where we are able to offer free fitness, or I want to say free fitness park for our residents. Mm -hmm. Call, contact them, talk to um, the consultant. He reached out and mentioned that we had the perfect Location. He mentioned Foundation Park, but I steered him away from Foundation Park and steered him towards Citizens or Liberty Park. Um, with the um, trail going in this year, I think it would be a perfect location for us to provide a offset location where people are able to go get body weight strength training, um, maybe walk and do anything they can within the area. Um, you see there's a $90,000 commitment. That's what I was asking about. Okay, the ninety thousand dollars. Could you focus commitment. on that, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, the hundred twenty thousand dollars that they're asking for um, will cover the campaign. The, the campaign for it will also cover all of the equipment and the ribbon cutting ceremony. So they'd basically do all of the legwork for us, um, and we'd be paying for all of the equipment and install. Thanks. Yep. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Bruce? Thank you, Mayor. Um, just need to let everybody know that uh, we had uh, Officer Jason Gross resign, and uh, we also have Officer uh, Beach, who is in the final process at Lincoln County Sheriff's Office. So we've been doing some interviews. Um, we offered uh, an individual position today on a conditional offer. Um, so if he passes the physical and the psychological exam, he will be. Uh, replacing one of those two guys. Our list, we're still working on off our list? He was the last one on our list. As of today, the list is expired. Okay. And we have a meeting with PBR tomorrow night to talk about maybe provisional to get that, to get actually uh, Officer Morton might slide from part-time to full-time if we get their approval. Mm -hmm. Very good. Saves us a lot of money on uniforms and training and things like that. Awesome. Any questions for Bruce? I have a question, maybe Chief, if you don't know this, what, what's the update? Are we talking about the vandalism from the winter? What about the most recent vandalism? Any updates on where that is in the court system? I have not checked on that. I okay. can get back with you. I'm just curious because when you talked about it. Okay. That would be great. If, if that's successful in prosecution, that would be a great way to for those guys too, or gals. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Mayor. Any committee chair reports? When Scott mentioned okay. AEP. I wonder if I could come back to DJ. Sure. We get an update on Main Street. Sure. Yes. There might be some progress there. Yeah, uh, Main Street, we are down to um, two easements needed. Um, two residents who have been the holdouts. I left messages for them today. I've talked to Suzanne about it, uh, scheduling time to go talk to them. Um, last meeting we had, we were down to four, we're down to two now. So we're getting really close, and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get out and talk to these folks. Um, my approach is just going to be, you know, request some time with them so they can hear us out. We can listen to their concerns and try to come to an understanding with them to get those done. 
so we can get AEP rolling. Very good. Exciting. Okay, committee chair reports. You got anything? Hmm? I do. Does anybody yes, else sir. have one? What's that? Am I the only one? Yes. Okay. Uh, buildings and grounds tonight. We did not schedule another one. Um, we'll schedule that at a later date. Uh, we discussed um, Old Town Hall. Um, the quotes qu aren't quite back from that yet. So uh, we will uh, look at that a little bit further. Um, but uh, I, I do want to mention that BJ brought Robertson into the equation there as far as getting quotes. Um, so the same company that's working on the police station, building the police station is also um, working on quotes for Old Town Hall renovation. Um, the other thing we did tonight was um, <coughs> we had Lori Van Balen, a local artist, come in, show us her presentation on a mural that she wants to put at the Municipal Park pull out. Um, that was mentioned last meeting. Um, so we decided to bring that to Billings and Grounds. Uh, Billings and Grounds Committee did uh, make a motion to recommend to council for approval. Um, I will make that in motions later on. Um, one thing that I do want to point out with that is um, we discussed having some type of a policy moving forward for murals or paintings that are on city property um, so we can I guess maybe place it a little bit um, if, if that's the right word and not just anything's put up there but we didn't think that we should uh, make Lori wait on us to put some legislation together and it's, it's pretty nice too so uh, she'll be done in two weeks so I don't think I missed anything it was kind of a long meeting um, that's all I have Yes, we did have a finance committee meeting scheduled. However, it didn't happen because there was a lack of a quorum. Um, so we'll just have to reschedule that. All right. Uh, before we get into unfinished business, if you folks that have spoke, if, if you want to, uh, you're not required to stay. Um, we're going to get into the business end of it. So. I just need his name and number. <laughs> I'll give it to you. All right. If I leave now, I'm, I, I didn't need that. He's going to give it to you right now, and then you can okay. take off. All right. Yep. All right, here we go. Ordinance 2018-4314 for a second reading. So moved. Moved by Mr. Hicken. Got a motion by Mr. Hicken. Need a second. Second. Second by Mr. Lee. Kathy, when you're ready. Second <laughs> reading. Ordinance 2018-4314. This is the second reading and ordinance to rezone properties located at 14379 East Broad Street, parcel number 063-146946-00.000-14359 East Broad Street, parcel number 063-143604. Dash zero zero point zero 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 one four three zero five Columbus Road parcel <coughs> parcel number zero six three dash one four one nine three zero dash zero zero point zero 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 and one four two seven one Columbus Road parcel number zero six three dash one four one three zero six dash zero zero point zero 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 totaling twenty point three five plus or minus acres in the city of Pataskla from medium low density residential district R87 zoning classification and general business district GB zoning classification to the general business district GB zoning classification. Thank you. Uh, discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I, I, I want to thank Mr. Fulton for pre preparing the report, and we talked for probably half an hour or so, all told, uh, in between meetings. Um, and um, the way I see it, I, this this property, and I know that there was that there was no citations issued, but I understand that the property, uh, Mr. Fulton, correct me if I'm wrong, is not in compliance with our zoning code right now, especially the trucking company, is that correct? There, 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 are, there are violations that could, that could be cited. 
Correct. So my, my, my view is this. I mean, I, I've seen the pictures. Um, it looks, <laughs> there's there's some trucks there I suppose are drivable, but it looks like a junkyard uh, back in there. There's broken down trucks. And at and, and one time, from looking at the Secretary of State's records, there was a, a uh, truck repair business that operated there for, for a few years. It's, it's no longer active, but it could still be going on there. But it looks like there's something along those lines possibly going on there too where they're cannibalizing truck parts or whatever but that's 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 a mess and i i i would um well i'm gonna make a motion to this but i want to talk about it a little bit i think i'm gonna make a motion to table this um and see if we can't get this the, the, the trucking company into compliance i understand there's there's no problems with the oberst property correct the the, the residence or the the house that one one uses a real estate company Correct. To my knowledge, there's no violations, um, although the zoning inspector has not inspected it. But um, to my knowledge, there are none. So that that's that's my thing. Until my, my my view, until we can get this the, the trucking property, and I'm not sure which parcel numbers it is, but I'm, I'm in favor. They they brought this together as one one one. It's coming as one ordinance. But I'd like to I'd like to move to table this until we can get this the trucking comp company into compliance, and then. Have them come back, and if you know they need to be cited, then then then, then, then so be it. But I, I don't see rewarding a business that's not in compliance with a, with a zoning reclassification to further their business until they get into compliance. So maybe there's some discussion the council wants to have with that. I, I don't know. Yes, sir. I could agree more with Todd. I think he um, said that very well, and I, I agree with that. So. Mr. Higgin. I also took the time to meet him and meet with Scott. Thank you very much. Um, I also went down and drove down the summit road. It was hard to kind of see uh, exactly what what the factors were in, in the back part of the property. So I'm also extremely grateful for the other photos that show the, the, the areas of concern. So. You need a second on this motion. Oh, I'll second that. Off the table? <coughs> yes. Okay, well, we'll I think he said he thought he was going yeah, to. I don't yes, I, I, I've got, I just, yeah, I, yeah, we're okay. Okay. I just, I just want, I, I want yeah, to we're in the discussion this. phase. He's, yeah. He may decide to, 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 to okay. pull a table after we've discussed it for a little bit. I so. want to give folks an opportunity to discuss it. Right. So, so. Any other discussion? You, you know, I do have one question, just, and this may have already been answered for interview for Scott. It, it's, could you just refresh my memory on, or all of our memories on, um, if there's anybody else that don't, doesn't recall? why they chose to go in, why that realty chose to go in with the, um, what's, what am I, what's the business on the truck the trucking company? So I knew there was a reason, could you just refresh my memory on that? Initially when Ms. Overs came in to apply to rezone her property, she split zone between right. general business in the front and a residential, I believe it's already seven in the back. She came in and she was informed of the fee to rezone. She determined that fee was too high. So what we did is we mentioned that her neighbor to the east, there's at that time we said, well, there's three properties to the east of you that are in a similar situation. You may approach them that you could go in on one application because you're requesting the same thing and it could reduce the cost so as an option. Not saying you have to do it, just saying, that person might be willing to do it and you could split costs that might make it more palatable for you. So she spoke with the the properties of the East with which are all under the ownership of Mr. McClellan and they proceeded with that application. However, when we do multiple requests on one application, it's kind of an all or nothing situation. So for example, in the report I put the example for a variance. That if someone was looking to build a shed and they would need a variance for height setback and size, we give them the option that you can put all these on one application and pay one application fee, but all variances must be approved. So if one of those variances was not approved, the whole application goes down. The other option is to split those up, that you can do each variance on its own application, but then you pay a separate application fee for those. So because they were in a similar situation and she felt the cost for the rezoning was too high, um, that's why I've suggested she she may look to the property owner to the east, being Mr. McClellan, and get some cost savings that way, which is why she decided to go that route. 
I, I, I do remember that. Now, I guess what I'm getting at, um, I hope this makes sense, but um, she had she had the option to, to go alone. I, I just, I hate to see someone that's wanting to start a new business be punished and not moved along because someone's not in compliance. But she had that option, so. She did and she was made I'm aware of it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You want to add something, Mr. King? I was just going to say she she had that option and she was aware of the all or nothing approach with combining them. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I, yeah. I mean, and, and I I understand the I think I understand the zoning, I, but I understand <coughs> that there's a lot of different things you can do in a zoning classification. But to me, these are two very different functions when you have this as a real estate or a, a, manage, a property management company, I'm not sure what she, <coughs> she wants to do, and, and a trucking company. I realize that in the zoning classification world, that's the same thing. It's, it's, it's the same. But if you're their neighbor, it's not the same thing. It's completely different. So I would just I understand that they can, they can go together and they know the risks, but I, that may not be a good idea to encourage that when the, when, the, when the actual uses are gonna be so different that as Mr. Lee said, we have a property owner, she's maybe, she, maybe unwittingly, she's, she's joined now with, with the trucking company and it may not be, who knows, maybe successful, it may not be, but as Mr. Lee said, she's trying to start, she's trying to start a new business and she may get, you have to do this all over again. So I think that maybe, is from a practical side to, to to discourage maybe discourage that I, I don't know I, I don't know how you, I don't know how you manage it down there in your office you can't stop people from doing it but when it comes up to us it's it's a completely, completely different look than the planning zone that's, that's it. unless we any other discussion, discussion? No. No. so uh, thank you Mr. Mayor. I will move that we uh, table ordinance 2018-4314 got a motion to table second and seconded by Mr. Uh, Lee. Kathy, roll, please. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? Yes. Barstow? Yes. 4314 is table. Ordinance 2018-4315 for a second reading. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Oh, sorry, Mr. Hicken. I will be recusing myself from all um, discussion regarding this ordinance. All right, very good. We have a motion by Mr. Uh, Barstow. I need a second. Seconded by Mr. Lee. <coughs> Kathy, when you're ready. Ordinance 2018-4315. This is the second reading and ordinance to rezone properties located at North End Drive, parcel number 064-310536-00.000 and 65 South Main Street, parcel number 064 310050-00.000 totaling 0 0.70 plus or minus acres in the city <coughs> of Casper from the medium high density residential district R15 zoning classification to the general business district GB zoning classification. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. Could you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion? Okay, very good. Ordinance 2018-4320 for a second reading. So moved. Moved by Mr. Barstow. Second. Seconded by Mr. Hickam. Kathy, when you're ready. Another deep breath there. Okay. <laughs> ordinance 2018-4320. This is the second reading and ordinance granting franchise to the Licking Rural Elect Electrification Incorporated of Newark, Ohio. Its successors and assigns the right to acquire, construct, maintain, and operate in the streets, thoroughfares, alleys, bridges, and public places of the city of Patasco, Ohio, lines for the distribution of electric energy to the city of Patasco and its inhabitants thereof for light, heat, power, and other purposes, and for the transmission of the same within, through, or across the city of Patasco. Discussion? Okay, resolutions, motions, new business. Ordinance 2018 4316 for a first reading. So moved. Moved by Mr. Second. Hicken, seconded by Mr. Barstow. Kathy, when you're ready. 
<clears throat> Ordinance 2018-4316. This is the first reading and ordinance to amend Chapter 1293 of the codified ordinances of the City of Batasca and repeal all other ordinances and parts of the ordinances in conflict therewith. Discussion? Okay, resolutions. Resolution 2018-028, resolution authorizing and directing the city administrator to execute a contract with Jamison Well Drilling, Inc. for the 2018 Water Well Preventive Maintenance Program. Mm -hmm. Moved by Mr. Higgin. Second. Seconded by Mr. Barstow. Discussion? And roll. Lee? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-029, a resolution authorizing and directing the city administrator to enter into an agreement with the Licking County Health Department for citywide mosquito treatment for the calendar year 2018. Mm -hmm. Second. Moved by Mr. Hicken and seconded by Mr. Barstow. Discussion? And roll. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? Yes. Resolution passes. Uh, any motions tonight? Uh, well, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, buildings and grounds approved um, the recommended council. Um, so I can make a motion to approve the installation of the mural on the municipal park building. Got a motion by Mr. Lee. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Uh, Hayes. Discussion and roll. Hayes. Yes. Pickham? Yes. Lee? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Uh, motion passes. You'll, you'll let her know? Mm -hmm. I will. Very good. Uh, any other motions? All righty. Any additional citizens' comments? Anybody wish to speak? I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Mr. Andy Yazowitz, our uh, prosecuting attorney here at Mayor's Court, has come in to observe tonight and get bit by a dog. So uh, <laughs> it's a great evening. We're just having fun. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for coming, sir. We wanted to observe and watch all the work that Brian does. <laughs> so. Sorry. Wake up. Wake up. All right. No citizens' comments. We'll go around the room and we'll start with Suzanne. Okay. Um, 300 plus fifth graders down at Municipal Park today. Beautiful day. And got to, the kids were in the pool and they were all over the park and appreciate the, the it was beautiful. It looked great. So, um, Story Walk gets installed tomorrow by Branham Signs and unveiled on Wednesday night at 545. And I appreciate you communicating with Jeff at the library. And um, we're excited to kick off another summer down at the park with the, the library and the story walk. And finally, um, add to your calendar, June 9th is the Licking Memorial Triathlon with Active Fit. And we're excited about that. That's, gosh, I think, what, fourth or fifth year we've been doing that down there with them. Yep. And that's also at Municipal Park. So all of my updates have to do with Municipal Park. So the 9th. Uh, Registration is about 8 in the morning, and kids from 6 to 12 on bicycles. Always appreciate Bruce being down there and West Licking to cover the the hill of death or whatever we call that, coming yeah. down from Township to make the turn into the park. Uh, we don't park. officially call it the hill when of the, death. I don't, well, I'm sure that's a legal we have no such nightmare. Thing. It's actually a gentle slope. The gentle slope of death. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you what. They, everybody works together to make that a great, great deal. So I, that is all I have. All right, very good. Mr. Barstow. <laughs> um, I don't have anything. Mr. Hicken? Uh, two things. Thanks to Mike Walker for coming in and telling us about it, uh, his Eagle Scout project. Nice to see that moving along. Also, kudos for getting the leak grant money. That was uh, pretty cool. Thank you. I just want to mention uh, we, uh, I was invited to, and, and uh, it was amazing. I. I I told the crowd that I don't, I don't think you'd ever get this many people to come to see a dentist. But we had uh, Dr. Jonah, uh, his ribbon cutting was on Saturday, and, and uh, there was probably more than, more than 500 people between uh, the ribbon cutting and, of course, he had, he had uh, barbecue. So 
uh, and he had a 10 up. And, and if you get a chance, just go over and see what he's done to that school. He is um, such a nice man. I taught with him at Pataskala for many, many years. Yeah, he was a he's teacher. A if you don't know the story, he was a teacher, uh, went to dentist school. Now he's a dentist, and, and now he's he's completely renovated that brick. Every, every brick on that building has been restored, and it's just amazing what he's done to it. And in fact, it was perfect timing because uh, my, my dentist in Gahanna had retired, so I'm the first guy in the chair on June 4th. Uh, <laughs> he used the word guinea pig once, and I didn't like that, so he's <laughs> not using that anymore. But, uh, but it was a great, it was a beautiful day, even though it rained off and on. But if you get a chance, just go look at that building. It is amazing. Totally amazing. Got anything, Mr. Zeps? Nope. <sighs> okay, Mr. Lee. Make a motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn. And seconded by Mrs. Hayes. Discussion and roll. Second. Yes. Lee? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Yes. Yep. Meeting adjourned. Kathy?